Welcome to 4.4's Math Moment. Today's students learned how to multiply a two-digit number by another two-digit number. Now they learned lots of different strategies today, but I'm going to show you the traditional method because it's mainly the one that our students choose to use. Now you might have a student that uses lattice or place value sections or some other strategies that they've learned in the past and also this year, all right? But I'm gonna show the traditional method today and if you have any questions about the specific method they're using, you'll wanna make sure to co um, contact their math teacher. All right, let's look at the first example. It says 24 times 67. No word problem, just the plain problem itself. I'm gonna go ahead and move it over here so I can work with it a little bit easier. Now, 24 times 67. What we want to do is only focus on the 7 first. Take 7 times the 4, and then 7 times the 2. So 7 times 4, I know, is 28. So I put my 8 down below, and I carry my 2 up top. 7 times 2 is what I'm moving on to now. 7 times 2 is 14, plus the extra 2 that I carried over is going to be 16. Now, what I tell my students is, when they're done with the 7, X it out so you don't worry about it anymore. Also X out anything that went with the 7. So like this 2 here, it went with the 7, it was from a 7 fact, 7 times 4. So I also want to X it out so I don't get confused and have any extra numbers. I also use the saying, if I put an X here, I put an O down below, so thinking X and O. All right, that's our placeholder. We have to have that when we're multiplying by a second digit. So I put my placeholder there because, and the reason we have a placeholder is because the six is in the tens place. So when I multiply by the six, I'm really multiplying by 60. So because that's really hard for students to see when they're doing multiplication, that placeholder is there because that shows that it's taking that everything times 60. It's moving everything over for that extra place value. So six times four, I know is 24. I carry the two again. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14. And now I'm done with this 7, and I'm done distributing the 6 to each number, so now I just have to add my two numbers that I came up with. Now, something important to remind your student as well is that it's very important to make sure that they have their digits lined up underneath their multiplication problem so they don't get confused about which numbers should be added together. All right, if they start to rush or um, have some work that they can't quite tell where the number belongs, they might have to look back at their problem again. So here I've got 8 plus 0, 8. 6 plus 4 is 10. I carry my 1 to the next column. 4 plus 1 is 5, plus another 1 is 6. And then I just have 1 for the last problem. So my final answer is 1,608. Let's look at example two. It says, Grandma Betty is purchasing art sets for each of her 16 grandchildren. So we've got 16 grandchildren there. Each art set costs $37. How much will Grandma Betty spend? I always encourage students that whenever they see a number in word form, to write that number up ahead so they remember what it is and they don't have to go back and think about it. So if each art set is $37, that's the same as one art set being $37. But she bought 16, so that's a multiplication problem. And I'm gonna move that work over here. So I've got 37 times 16. Now, if your student is adamant about putting the 16 on top and doing 16 times 37, they're going to get the exact same answer. So with multiplication, the order does not matter. They can have either number on top or bottom. So 37 times 16, I'm going to go ahead and distribute my 6 to both top numbers before I work with my 1. 7 times 6 is 42. I carry my 4 on top of the 3 to take care of next. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 4 is 22. Now, I'm done distributing my 6 to the 7 and the 3, so I'm going to cross out my 6 so I don't use it again and I don't get confused. And I'm going to cross out anything that went with it. This four went with it, so I'm gonna cross it out as well. Anytime I make an X and I get rid of that number, I make an O down below, all right? So now I just work with the one, and I'm gonna distribute the one to everything. One times seven is seven. One times three is three. 
and now we can just add these numbers together. So 2 plus 0 is 2, 7 plus 2 is 9, and 2 plus 3 is 5. So because I'm working in with money here, your student could add a dollar sign, they could also add that she doesn't have any cents that she's working with since we are working with whole dollars, all right, for a final answer of $592. Now, again, if your student is working with a different strategy, such as lattice, place value sections, or something else, please make sure to see your math teacher if you have questions about that specific um, strategy or check out other videos in this unit.